Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. This is Secondhand Home Theater. If you've never been here before, I talk about various home theater topics. And generally, I talk about used items because most of my items here in my home theater are used. And that's sort of what we're doing here today. Uh, this is the second video in my calibration series. I know plenty of people out there have been asking about it and leaving me uh, comments and messages. So I'm finally getting around to it. Here today, we're talking about the next step in the calibration process, or actually the first step, I guess, and that is squaring the image on your screen. And uh, this really applies to projectors. If you're kind of watching these videos for TV related calibration, this is mainly for projectors, uh, where the future videos that come out after this, talking about brightness, contrast, you know, focus, stuff like that. Some of that will apply to TVs, but this one here today is almost exclusively for projectors. So you can stay and watch the video. I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, but if you skip this one, if you're trying to calibrate a TV, that's perfectly fine because this one's going to be mainly talking about a projector related topic and squaring the image. First things first, a couple little disclaimers up front. Uh, number one, I am not an expert in any of this stuff. I am not like ISF certified or anything. I'm just an enthusiast, the guy who enjoys the hobby of home theater and who's kind of had his own experiences with calibrating projectors and things over the years. So uh, take my word for what it is, but don't you know take me as some expert that's been like trained and ISF certified and has all this like knowledge and stuff about it professionally. I don't have anything like that. So just kind of know that is, uh, you know, the first disclaimer up front. Uh, second, which isn't really a disclaimer, but I just want to put this out there. These videos, if you've seen the runtime, are probably going to be a lot longer than my normal content. And they're going to be styled a little bit differently. I'm doing this little seated bit here at the beginning of this video. But going forward, the second part of this video and then my other videos uh, following this are going to be more of a live stream style video like how a live stream would be done uh just without the fact that it's actually live it's going to be recorded so i'm going to try and keep uh minimal like editing and cutting in there uh and really only do that to kind of position the camera around so you guys can see what i'm doing but it's mainly going to be just like me talking and explaining things and doing stuff like that so it's going to be a little different than the videos i've done in the past so on to the topic at hand here today, which is squaring the image. Now for all of these videos going forward, the projector I'm gonna be using to calibrate uh, everything is going to be my newest projector I got here in my home theater, and that's my D-Vision projector from Digital Projection. And the reason I'm using that one is it is the brightest out of all my projectors that I have here. Uh, it can top out somewhere around six seven thousand lumens if i have everything set up properly so i'm hoping it's going to be bright enough that everyone will be able to actually see what's happening on the projector screen when we're doing stuff throughout these videos uh right now i do have it set up on just a makeshift kind of stand with a tv table tv tray uh, i took it down off of its normal shelf that would be up at the back of the room just because for this video here today talking about squaring the image where you have to physically kind of move the projector around a little bit it's just going to be easier to do that here than it would be to try and show you guys on my shelf back there but it is also good because i know all the lens settings and everything that's in the memory for this projector is going to be wrong for where it's sitting so that will actually be a benefit for this video because I'll be able to actually show you in real time how to shift the image and manipulate, you know, the uh, height, you know, and everything of the projector to get everything square. So what is squaring the image of the projector? More or less, it's what it sounds like. Uh, even though it's not technically a square, it's more of a rectangle. I think squaring came uh, kind of around because of 4.3 projectors and stuff back in the day. Okay, but more or less, what you're trying to do is get the image so that it is a perfect rectangle up on your projector screen. So what I mean by that, and I'm going to get up and walk over there, so I may go out of focus. We'll see. My camera's not the greatest for this. But what that generally means is that the image, when you project it up here on the projector screen, 
is going to be completely even and square on all four sides of your projector screen. So you're not going to have an image that turns into a trapezoid so that, you know, one end is way off to the side over here and pushed out or sunken in or the top or bottoms tilted in and out. It's everything is a perfect rectangle, a perfect square on your screen. And that's ultimately what we're going to do here today. And the reason that we're going to do that is because you don't want to have a misaligned projector image because that's going to degrade the quality of the image. It's going to cause a lot of problems to get the proper zoom and focus. And it's just not going to look right on a screen like this if everything's all misaligned. And it's beneficial, in my opinion, I think most people who are in the home theater kind of hobby and everything would tell you, do all this stuff first. You know, get it set up where you want it to be, whether that's hanging off a projector mount or on a shelf or wherever it's going to be. Do that first, get the image square, and then go in and start messing with your actual calibration settings of brightness, contrast, you know, focus, sharpness, all that sort of stuff. Because if you try and do all that when the image is misaligned, you're just going to have to go back and change it all again. So you're just doing more work than you really need to. Unless you're really just into that stuff and you just want to mess around, uh, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But I think most people just want to get it kind of set and done uh, in as minimal amount of time as possible so that then you can go and actually enjoy watching content on there. So that's ultimately what we're going to do today. It's squaring the image uh, and getting it square on the screen. Now, there's a couple of things that come into play with this, and I'm going to try and explain it in layman's terms and try and be somewhat brief, not overly uh, detailed so that this video runs, you know, like two hours or something crazy uh, on there. But ultimately, what's going to dictate how square the image is on the screen is going to be how your projector is seated on its either platform on a shelf or how it's seated with a ceiling mount. Now for my videos here today, everything like I said is gonna be done with it mounted right side up on this little TV tray thing that I have set up over here because that's how I do it in my home theater. That's how my shelf mount is set up. Now if you had a ceiling mount, everything would kind of still be the same, but some of your settings would be inverted a little bit because it would be hanging upside down instead of seated right side up. And when you're trying to level it and everything on the physical projector unit, the way this projector is set up and most projectors in, you know, the standard home theater range that you would buy probably have adjustable feet and things like this one has. When you get into some of the lower down, you know, like $50 Amazon projectors, they may not have adjustable feet. They may just be flat feet. And then that means you're just going to have to get little foam pads or do something to kind of like prop it up or down or tilt it or whatever. But for the one we're using today and for most of the projectors that, you know, you would see like your JVCs, your Sonys, your Epsons, they're going to have adjustable feet. So if you're sitting them right side up, you can level them. Now, if it's the other way where you're hanging it on a projector mount, that usually will have adjustments on the projector mount either knobs, you know, and this all depends how expensive of a projector mount you buy, whether you're buying a $20 cheap little Amazon mount or you're getting, you know, a $100, $200 like chief mount or something that's really fine-tuned. Uh, but most of them will have either little knobs that you can just turn that will adjust all the different directions, you know, pitch, yaw, uh, you know, left and right, up and down, all that sort of stuff. Or it'll have maybe like a little screw that you can turn with an Allen key or something. Uh, or it'll be on the case of the really cheap ones, because this is what I had initially in my home theater. Uh, you would have to kind of loosen up the screws, adjust it and get it in place and then tighten it back down. You know, and that's kind of how you had to play with it. Uh, but every projector mount will have some some fashion of that. Just the level of, uh, you know, fine tuning and the ease of adjustability are going to range depending on whether you're buying like a cheap. $15, $20 little mount, or you're getting a real expensive, you know, home theater dedicated style mount, like a chief mount. Uh, but again, for today, we're going to be talking about having it seated right side up on a shelf, uh, which like I said, for today is going to be this TV tray. 
So what kind of, like I was saying, uh, affects how square your image is? It's mainly going to be the physical placement of the projector. And that's going to be adjusted either with the mount, you know, in the settings on the mount, you know, and the adjustments made there. Or in terms of how we're doing it today is going to be the feet and the physical moving it left and right, you know, kind of around. And then adjusting the feet up and down to get everything kind of balanced and level. One other thing to note real quick, although it doesn't really matter too much for squaring the image, but just a little Matt's tip kind of thing to think about if you're building out a home theater for the first time and not necessarily someone who, like me, may have a home theater and you're just getting a new projector to put in there. Uh, you really want to go online and search the projector or projectors that you're interested in and look up the throw ratio of the projectors. Uh, which I'll put the official definition of that up here on the screen. But more or less, the throw ratio is how far away or how close a projector has to sit to the screen to get a certain image size. You really want to look into that when you're building out a home theater for the first time so that you get a projector that actually fits within the dimensions of your space that you're going to be using. Uh, because you can get a lot of problems if you get one that has too close of a throw ratio and you can't sit it, you know, that close to the screen or one that's got too long of a throw ratio and you can't sit it, you know, that far enough away to get it to the proper image size. Uh, so you definitely want to look that up first before you venture into actually buying a projector and buying a screen. And you'll see a lot of different throw ratios, but most common standard kind of home theater projectors again from like jvc epson sony you know the big names that you see out there that are most common and most popular they're going to have what i kind of dub the standard mid level zoom ratio so it's going to allow you usually a flexibility of like 10 to 12 feet in between the shortest and the furthest away that projector can sit to reach the image size that you want to get so most home theater projectors are going to have a wide enough range that it shouldn't matter, but you really need to look just to make sure, uh, especially for example, like this D-Vision we're using today. Uh, those projectors have interchangeable lenses, so you can buy specific lenses that have specific throw ratios from extremely short throw ratios to extremely long throw and a bunch of variants in between. So if you're venturing into that style of projector, uh, you need to make sure you know what kind of lens is with it or what lens you're going to buy if it doesn't have one to make sure that lens fits the distance you're trying to like, you know, fit in your space because it could have a wide variety of zoom ratios and, and stuff on there depending what lens is, is with it. So, but that's more detailed specific stuff. I don't want to get into all that today. With that, let's get into the actual process and talking about squaring the image. I would definitely recommend a level, like just a standard level, which I have sitting off to the side here, and a laser level, if you can, you know, float the 15 or 20 bucks or whatever to buy one. Uh, those will definitely come in handy, not only in what we're doing here today, but just for general, like, projects around the house. The laser level especially, I've used that thing, you know, probably hundred or more times in, in my time here, you know, owning this house. It's definitely a tool that's kind of invaluable, you know, for hanging and mounting things. But those two uh, tools will definitely work and help out and make things a little bit easier for what we're doing here today. So with that, we're going to do a quick little cut here, a uh, little, you know, kind of transition over. I'm going to move the camera around and then we're going to talk about actually leveling and squaring the projector for your image on the screen. So stay tuned, hang on just a second. Okay, all right, so here we go. We're gonna give this a try. Uh, my camera does not do very well um, on like depth of focus on like a wider range. That's why most of my videos, I'm within a handful of feet of my camera phone, uh, just because uh, while the quality is pretty good, it does struggle a little bit on uh, the lighting conditions in here and stuff like that. So I'm just going to put that out there up front. But we're going to get to actually squaring the image now. And hopefully you'll be able to actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, now, first tip uh, that I would definitely pass along to anyone who's doing this. Let your projector turn on and warm up for like 20, 30 minutes 
before you start messing with any settings, whether that's physically squaring the image or when we start getting into like contrast and brightness and all that sort of stuff like image adjustments. Just because uh, when the projector is cold and you turn it on for the first time, if you just jump immediately to start doing stuff, the elements on the inside of the lens and inside of the actual projector are not warmed up enough. So those are going to like kind of change over time. But normally after like 20, 30 minutes of having it turned on, everything will be warmed up enough. So when you make your adjustments, uh, the lens isn't going to shift and the components with all the heat isn't going to cause things to shift. So it's just a good idea. Warm it up, let it run for 20, 30 minutes before you come in to actually do anything like this. Uh, and that mainly goes for lamp based projectors, you know, laser based or RGB laser LEDs. I'm sorry, LED based uh, projectors like my Knoll. It's still a good idea to let them warm up a little bit, but you probably don't have to let them warm up for like a half hour. That's usually more of a lamp-based projector kind of thing. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do, I have my projector down off the shelf on this uh, TV tray, like I mentioned. I have it sitting here. I turned it on, warmed it up, but I have the shutter closed because there is a shutter function on these lenses for this uh, D-Vision projector. So it is on, but the shutter is closed, so you can't see the image. I already have the test pattern pulled up, so when the shutter opens, we'll see uh, a bright white screen with the test pattern. Uh, now, what we're going to do when that comes up, we're going to see kind of where it's at. We're going to have to shift the image to get it kind of centered on the screen and kind of uh, expand it, you know, zoom it out enough so that we can kind of see the lines and see everything that's on the test pattern. And then we're going to go in with our levels, which I'm going to grab right here off camera. I've got a standard, this is just a magnetic little level. I believe this was from Ikea, uh, which is pretty nice. And it's got a little like laser on it. I should zoom it out there. So you can kind of level this this way. Oops, turn that off. Uh, but the one I really enjoy using is this laser level that will actually shoot a line across as well, you know, on there. And it has a little level on here. This is usually what I like to do to test, you know, if the image is square and level and everything. So we've got our little tools here, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk around the other way. I'm going to open up the shutter and then we're going to work on uh, the lens shift in the zoom and everything to kind of get it out and then see where we're at. I know for a fact that this is not going to be perfect, I don't think, but I think it's going to be pretty close uh, to what we need. So. You'll also notice just on this projector, this is a fixed installation projector, not necessarily a home theater projector. So it does have an LCD screen you're going to see light up on here. And this one has all the function buttons on the back that will allow you to do all this stuff that we're going to do. Most modern home theater projectors are going to have to use the remote. Uh, the lens shift may have a manual control on some of them where they have, you know, like rotary knobs or dials up here maybe that you can use. Uh, some may have a little keypad to kind of go on there uh, and move around the menu system, whatever, something very basic, kind of like just these buttons here and maybe a menu. Uh, but this one has a lot more options for this because this is a professional uh, home, like installation projector for a venue. So this one is way different than what you're probably normally going to see on a lot of this stuff. Uh, but you will see the LCD screen is going to turn on once I open the shutter. Uh, and the remote I have, this is a tech swamp, just like universal, like third party remote. I'm not really going to use this all that much. I'm going to use all the buttons here on the actual back of the projector. So anyways, we'll hit the shutter button. If I don't unplug it. And it's going to open. And hopefully you can see the image projected there. Now you are going to notice as well, it's probably going to be out of focus because of the ISO settings I have to use on this uh, to kind of make it bright enough to see everything. If I turn the ISO way down, that might be too washed out even at like 6,000 lumens to even see it. Uh, but it does have a pattern, you know, of lines for screen sizes. You'll also going to notice, you can probably see it already, you're seeing lines go up and down on the projector screen. What that is, is because this is a DLP projector with a color wheel, those lines that you're seeing run up and down on the screen are the like color filters, color, you know, 
pieces of the color wheel flashing in sequence on there and the camera is quick enough to pick that up where our human eye normally doesn't see it so anyways we've got the image here so what we're going to do now because this is misaligned you can tell it's down almost down on the floor because this was up on my shelf we have to raise the image up so we can at least get it on the screen to see if you know it's level or not so what we're going to do on this is you're going to hit shift which there is a button back here for shift uh that is a lens shift so most modern home theater projectors are going to have some form or fashion of lens shift uh some of them like on jvc's and some of the higher quality uh epson's higher price like sony's are going to have powered lens shift and powered zoom and focus and all that other ones are going to have manual adjustments so for example you can't really see it but my Marantz projector which is sitting behind me have uh, manual adjustments so it has a vertical lens shift but it's a knob that you just turn left and right to raise or lower the image and then focus and zoom is all done with a standard you know where you just rotate the rings to do it but most modern you know home theater projectors if you're getting like I said JVC Epson whatever are gonna have powered features so anyways we're gonna go back hit the shift so it comes back up and we're gonna just hit the up arrow it'll take a minute but this is gonna bring the image up and I'm doing all this in real time like I said I'm gonna try and keep minimal editing and stuff here just so uh, everything can kind of be documented. We can kind of just go through this in real time. I may edit or cut a few things out if I slip up too much on what I'm trying to say or something comes up like that. But So yeah, so here we go. We're going to just keep putting this up until this is by eye approximately in the middle, give or take. Because when we eventually zoom out here in just a second, uh, it's probably going to zoom in all four directions. So we don't want to like put it too close to the top and I can already tell uh, on the camera I may have to even peek my head around here let's take a look uh, you might be able to tell but you're not sitting dead center you might be able to tell slightly that the image here already looks like it's a trapezoid that the right hand of the image looks like it's pushed in a little more and the uh, left hand of the image is pulled out a little more but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna zoom in uh, the focus doesn't really matter so much but the shift in the uh, zoom does for what we're going to do. So we're going to click zoom now. And again, uh, you might have an option on a remote or something, depending what brand you have. But we're going to do zoom and we're going to zoom out and just keep going. And actually, with my lens here, uh, I'm going to have to pull this back a little bit because this is not going to fit at back zoom. Let's see. Actually, yeah, so we're going to have a bit of a problem here. This projector, I don't know, let's move it back a little bit. Because of the zoom ratio, I don't know if this is gonna fit. All right, well see now, here's a good thing about physical placement and how this affects your uh, zoom and your squareness of the image. By me moving, I pulled my little TV tray back slightly and pulled the projector back to the very end of the TV tray and kind of adjusted it you could tell it's changed how the image looks on here. So we're going to go back to shift. We're going to bring this back to the center. I don't know if this is fully going to fill the screen or not. No, it's not, but that's okay. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to try and line it up kind of in the middle, and then we're going to bring it down now. Until it's roughly center. Okay, so now we've got it there. So the next thing we want to do, and we're going to walk around, we're going to look and see how square this image is already. You can kind of eyeball it and notice that it looks fairly kind of level, but ultimately it's it's not. So let's see if we can pick this up on the camera. I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to grab my laser level and I'm going to turn it on and sit it here and bring it up to this line here line it up until it's even with what's on here and we're going to see where we're at here this is always a fun thing too to try and do make sure you get it lined up correctly and it is off but actually not by much i actually did 
a pretty good job because I've had this level up on my <laughs> on my shelf. So we're actually pretty pretty close here. It's not not too bad. Yeah, actually we're not not off too much on here. So actually I did a pretty good job. So this video is gonna be a little bit <laughs> a little bit uh shorter maybe than what I was planning. But we're gonna manipulate this a little bit here. So just for the sake of this video, because that's actually a pretty pretty good uh show of whether or not it's level. Another way you can do this, I'm gonna hit the uh shift again just for an example purpose. My screen is level for the most part, you know, it's perfectly square on the wall. I made sure of that. So if you go to shift and bring the image up, oop, I actually got to hit shift again, shift. And you might see the image wobbling. That's because of my TV tray. Uh, when you have it up on a shelf or a mount, it shouldn't wobble like that. But if you look, when it's completely up to the top of the screen, I'm going to walk over this way. It should be completely level with the top edge of the screen. But if you look here, yeah, actually, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Might have to adjust it a little bit. But what I'm going to show you here in a second, and then we'll go back to fixing it. I'm going to tilt this projector. I'm going to angle it because this is all actually pretty good right now. But if I say do this, we turn it way over here. And I'm going to shift the image back to the center so you can see. Like this. Let's keep going a little bit. That's good enough. But here, this would be a trapezoid. So as I walk over here, you can definitely tell this edge of the image is way, way closer to the uh, projector than what this end over here is. If you look at this, you can see how much smaller this side is. And so when you have an issue like this, what you then have to do is take the projector and physically turn it and move it back the other way. And that should level it out. But by the same token and why we want to like do this and come up and constantly look and measure as we start to get close. If you turn it too far the other way, then the other side of the image is going to be way bigger. And a lot of these factors play into each other. So the zoom factor, the sh lens shift, stuff like that is all going to play differently depending on how you have the actual, you know, orientation set up. But again, so now we're back here kind of to the middle. Let's uh, bring this image back with the lens shift. And we're going to see how this looks on the horizontal plane. And then we're going to talk about the vertical plane or axis, I guess. And I actually have, just as a small little tip, when I put my projector screen up, you may not be able to see it on the camera. I put a small little pair of nails directly in the center of my screen, just under the screen. So when I do square up my image for a new projector that I get in here, let's say, I have those two nails directly lined up so I know if the center line is in the middle of those two little nail heads, that is directly, you know, in the middle of my screen. But now we kind of manipulated, we moved around the projector a little bit. So let's take a look and see, because I think it's not, I don't think it's centered now. I think we moved it off center by doing what I was doing, but that's good for the sake of this video. And yeah, kind of. I mean, it's close. I mean, actually, yeah, we actually did a pretty, I did a pretty good job. I've done this so many times with stuff. I've actually gotten pretty good about, about doing this. Uh, so not to pat myself on the back, but this one was also up on my shelf and squared and leveled. So I think that kind of helps. All right. So we've pretty much got, I may tilt it slightly. We're going to shift it back a little bit here and kind of tilt the image a little bit, maybe like this to kind of try and get it square on the screen here. Now, 
one other kind of tip, one other thing that you're trying to do here, and this may cause some, you know, feathers to get ruffled, uh, whatnot. I've always made it a point that when you're trying to level and square the image, you're squaring the image to the actual projector screen that you have on the wall. And you're not trying to actually make the projector itself where it's seated 100% like square and level in its own space, if that makes sense. Because at least for my situation, and maybe if you're lucky enough to be able to build a home theater out from scratch, uh, you may have you know more ability to change this. But you're trying to get the actual image that you're watching pro like projected up here perfectly square so that what you're watching is perfectly square and level that does not mean that your projector where it's seated has to be perfectly square and level if that makes sense so that's what we're always trying to do at least in my opinion and so if you were to look you know on the side at my projector over here it looks slightly cockeyed and it looks like it's not perfectly level uh, but that doesn't really matter so much as the image we're getting is perfectly level and that's all going to like very slightly based on how you have the projector, you know, mounted and, you know, set up. So, but we're looking to make sure all four sides are completely square. So we've pretty much got the horizontal now. So if I was to pull the image to the left or right, which I'll do here with the lens shift again, without actually moving the projector. If you look as I move it to the left, it should, by all accounts, perfectly match up with the side of the screen here. But if you notice, if I pull my little makeshift curtain kind of away here, this top end of the projector is slightly out further than the bottom. You can see the bottom maybe on the camera is slightly in a little bit. So what that means is we have to tilt the projector slightly. And so what that normally means if it's bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom, that means you have to tilt the image, like the actual physical projector unit, down a little bit. And so this is gonna be a bit of a problem because this projector unit's pretty heavy. But this one here, this D-Vision has three feet on it. It has a front left and a right uh, foot, basically where these little indentations are up here. And then it has a third rear foot in the back, back here where this indentation is. And so what I'm going to have to do, and this is, like I said, this is like a 20 or 30 pound projector here. I'm going to go under and I'm going to bring out that foot a little more. And now if you see here, you can should be able to tell that's way too much. Uh, because if you look, you can tell the image is angled on the screen now. So now it just comes down to fine tuning. We're just going to bring that foot in a little bit until the vertical axis looks like it's going to line up perfectly uh, straight. And when you do this, again, you have to play with the settings. So you got to like bring the shift over. And honestly, that looks like it might be pretty good. Bring it up a little bit, and then we'll kind of re recheck here. And I apologize if I bump the mic. Normally, I don't use a lapel mic. I usually use my shotgun mic, but you have to be directly in front of the shotgun mic for it to work. And with me walking around, that isn't really gonna gonna work out too well. But this is still just slightly, slightly off. So we're gonna maybe do like another half turn here. And let's see, we'll walk back over, maybe thinking one more slight little turn. And I'm usually like somewhat of a perfectionist. If you ask my wife, uh, she's usually never too thrilled about that because I, <laughs> I will spend literally hours messing around with this stuff to try and get it extremely, you know, perfect and correct. But now if I'm looking, think it's projected a little more on the side there actually I might have to bring it back down a little bit 
And this is just the game you play of uh, constantly. Constantly just uh, messing with it. And then you go back to your shift. And it still needs to go. Ugh. Go just a little more. I think now. I think now we're good. I think we got it. There. Okay, well now let's check over on the right hand side. And we're good there too. So I think we're, we should be good and level. Now this also comes into play with leveling. You want to make sure the front is leveled. And so you will sometimes have to play with the front legs as well. Now, I did say a little bit ago as I walk in front of the projector there, you want the image to be squared on the actual surface that you're projecting onto and not so much the actual projector which if you were to look at this this projector is not i'll try and turn it you might be able to see this projector is not completely level and in fact it looks way off because this projector doesn't have a flat surface it's actually like humped and rounded in here and it's angled on its own so this is not the best kind of thing to to look at but you also want to like i was saying a minute ago just adjust these front feet as well to try and get the projected image to look square and be level and like i said if we go back over here and take my trusty little laser level and we just peel this across here hoping the camera can pick this up even though I've done it like four times already. Here we go. Yeah, this is... Yeah, we're... Yeah, we're pretty good. We're level on here. So that's level. And then you also just want to check the vertical one too. And make sure, you know what I mean, that you're not tilted. But if we were to look there, that is perfectly level down there too. So, so for what we are trying to do here today, this image is completely square to the screen. Uh, you know, it is completely squared up there and it's centered. The problem is, of course, I'm going to try and zoom out, but I think we're at max zoom and with the, like I was saying about throw ratios, where this is seated, this one doesn't really fit properly. It has to be back another, I don't know, whatever this is, like four or five feet to the shelf back here to actually get it. But we have that now. So one thing I am going to do, although. This isn't too much of a, you know, issue right now. I am going to focus this image in here just a little bit. And since this isn't at the proper zoom or at the proper uh, focus distance, There we go. That's good. So we've got it focused in now, and I don't know on the camera, the ISO setting may be slightly too much. You might be able to see it. I'm going to go turn off my overhead lights. And I'm probably going to mute this part right here. So if you have uh, Amazon, you know, like Echo Dot, it doesn't go off. Alexa, turn off the theater room lights. Turn off my little side light over here. And let's see, does this actually pop up to where you can see it? 
Yeah, kind of. Actually, you know what? We're going to pause for just a second, and I'm going to move the camera up, and we're going to see if we can get a little bit closer. Okay, so we've moved the camera up. I do apologize about the uh, just RGB, you know, color wheel kind of sliding through there. Uh, I may switch over to my null LED because there's no color wheel. It's the RGB. Uh, I don't know how bright that's going to be, uh, but we'll kind of pause and do that in a second. And I'll show you how that one is kind of set up. But this one here, if you look, like I said, you can put it on here and just get it lined up right there. Whoop. Yeah, right there. And that is level. And then if you were to just sit this here and put it straight down like that, that you can't really slide it down a little bit. That is perfectly level there too. So yeah, so we got it all squared. Uh, so that is what we've kind of got set up here with this one. Uh, like I said, everything is squared and level. And this is definitely something you want to do first. And like I said, if you're building out a home theater to begin with, do this. Get it square and level. You don't have to worry too much about focus, sharpness, or contrast. None of that sort of stuff. Just get it up here. And the actual grid image will look different depending on the manufacturer of the projector. Like I said, I'm going to kind of transition over in a second here and I'm going to put my null LED on. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. But that one has a much different grid. This one's actually cool uh, because I don't know if you can see in the corner. I'm going to actually slightly move my uh, camera here just over a little bit. I apologize for the wobbliness of it. <laughs> Like I said, this is more like a live stream style video. But if you can see up in the very uh, corner up here, this one actually has multiple aspect ratios. So it has a 16 by 9. So that is the full image size. It has a 1610, which kind of crops it in a little bit. It has 4.3. So your standard like old school uh, tube TV format. Academy ratio has a 5.4, which is a little bit smaller ratio in there. Then it has 1.85 to 1, so your standard kind of, you know, uh, black bar content for like movies. So it's got those lines in there, so you can see where that would project. And then it's got the 2.35 to 1, which is, you know, the widescreen kind of like constant height uh, movie image. So you would see kind of where each one of these would, uh, I got a cat hair or dog hair or something on my screen there but you would be able to see each aspect ratio which these division projectors uh that is really cool that that's a cool feature to have but anyways that's what this one looks like and if i back out of that menu real quick let me just walk back here and back out of the uh, menu all right we just gotta hit menu click here and like, so right here, it has the test image. It says combined. You could switch that off. Uh, so right now I have the AVS HD uh, disc in. Or you could just do this. Here's your, you know, standard 4.3 with just the lines for 4.3. Your 16.9, which would be the entire, you know, screen setup. 16.10, 1.85, 2.35, 5.4. And then the combined image that has all of them which is really nice. Anyways, but yeah, so this is just the uh, AVS HD 709 test patterns here. And like I said, if you wait a minute, I'm going to close the shutter on this one. We're going to fade to black and I will be right back. I'm going to turn on my null LED and hopefully we'll be able to see that pattern come up and I can show you how that looks a little bit different. Okay, so we're back. I've got my null LED set up here. And to be honest, maybe we'll mess with the null LED going forward. I don't know. It depends. With all the lights off in here, you can see the null LED uh, because it is a lot dimmer. But with lights on, you kind of have to use the other projector because of the lumens. Anyways, we've got this here. This is the menu here for this. This one's slightly different. But this test pattern to go to the grid 
on here, if you look, is literally just a grid pattern. And this one is actually, to be honest, when you're trying to do this, can mess with your eyes <laughs> after a while. Just the weird kind of checkerboard pattern really does kind of like mess with your eyes and uh, give you just kind of a weird feeling after a while. But this is another one. I don't think you'll be able to see it because there's so many lines. But if I was to take my level and put it up here, this one is level, you know, in a square in all four directions. And so anyways, yeah, that's what we're trying to do and what we were wanting to do here today in this video was to do that. I do have just a little switcher so I can switch from A, B on my projectors, depending on what I want to use. Hopefully this comes up. Uh, but yeah, so here's, again, the AVSHD kind of image. I think you can see a little bit of uh, like kind of lines clipping in there, whatever. That's because this ISO is set a little bit higher uh, on there to capture everything. If I was to tone it down a little bit, you probably wouldn't see that. But going forward, uh, kind of depending, I think, what projector I want to use and how this kind of turns out, we'll probably do either my null LED or my D-Vision projector for the calibration settings. And when we do that, doing it like this, I'm seeing all the cat hair that's on my uh, screen up here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this AVS HD disc to do all of the calibration. And so what we'll do is we'll go through the basic settings in the next videos. The first video I'm going to do after this, so the next one in line, will be probably contrast and brightness. We'll definitely knock those two out, uh, which I will also talk about just some projector features, you know, like a lens iris or dynamic black or dynamic dimming and how that can affect when you're doing a calibration like that. Uh, so that'll be the next video. And then the one after that will probably be like sharpness, focus, color, you know, things like that. And it may vary slightly just depending how long the videos are and how long I ramble. Cause even here I've been talking for like 30, 40 minutes amongst everything. So anyways, that's probably going to wrap it up for the video here today. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Hopefully this was somewhat informative and at least, I don't know, somewhat entertaining, or maybe you just have it on in the background. You're just listening to me uh, talk about this stuff, but I do appreciate everyone who's watched my content. I know people were asking me and wanting these videos to come out. So I'm trying to kind of knock them out as best I can. And I want to make sure they're at least watchable and decent enough quality, you know? Uh, but thank you to everyone out there. If you like the content I produce, definitely consider, you know, liking and subscribing, hitting the bell notification, all that good stuff. And definitely if you have any questions or if you just want to give me some feedback on this video or anything else, feel free to put a comment down below. I appreciate that as well. I'm going to wrap this video up and say goodbye. And I will see you the next time in the next video here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.